Hello, everybody. My name is Marie O'Neill, if you are not familiar with who I am, and I am an evolutionary astrologer trained through the through Stephen Forrest's apprenticeship program. I'm also a student of esoteric astrology. And so today, oh, excuse me for a second. Today, we're actually going to be talking about esoteric astrology. And the reason that we're talking about it is because I feel that it is, it is one of the missing pieces, um, or I, it's one of the missing pieces, I believe, in astrology. And I believe that it can help all of us to be better astrologers. If you are an evolutionary astrologer, you know, we, what we do with this is we're looking at really the evolution of the soul, the evolution of the individual and what they came here to do. We are looking at the personality in evolutionary astrology and also most of the other types of astrology. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at, we're answering questions such as what am I, what am I meant to do with my career? my finances? Am I uh, going to get married in this lifetime or not? Am I going to have money to do what I want to do? These are just some of the questions that we look at. We also, in evolutionary astrology, look at uh, where we've come from in the past. Our south node, we look at the nodal story, so to speak, is what we do. We're looking at the South Node and the North Node, which is wonderful. All of this is absolutely great. With esoteric astrology, what we're looking at is what happens when the personality part of the person is seeking to actually do the bidding or do the work of the soul. And the soul is, you know, it's concerned with you know, our individual evolution, for sure. It's concerned with our consciousness and, and how we are expanding our consciousness. And in Buddhism, we call it getting to basically enlightenment, the Buddha nature within all of us. In esoteric astrology, when we say we are looking at what happens, again, when the personality is seeking to do the bidding of the soul. The soul, in addition to being concerned with our personal lives and what we're doing, it's concerned with humanity and how each of us can contribute to the evolution of humanity. And I gotta tell you, no matter where you are in the world right now, we really <laughs> are concerned with humanity and where the consciousness is of humanity and where it is going and what, what we want for it. So this is actually the overarching um, intention with, uh, with esoteric astrology. And the, the reason that I wanted to talk about it today is because I feel it's a great adjunct to evolutionary astrology. It's like that next step. Um, with evolutionary astrology, and I believe that they can work hand in hand. So today, with the introduction, we're going to be focusing mainly on the ascendant in the chart. In esoteric astrology, we have the, uh, um, the importance of the ascendant is different than it is in regular our regular traditional uh, astrology. In esoteric astrology, the ascendant is where the soul actually incarnates, or I guess it, mm, the soul brings forth its intention for the life. And it is because, you know, the first house is also uh, the house to, house of manifestation. It's the physical house. It's what our body looks like. So what we're looking at here is the causal body, excuse me, and what that causal body looks like. What does the soul really want us to do in relation to humanity? 
So this is where the ascendant is extremely important. And because it is the causal form for, um, for the soul, the sun sign takes on a little bit of a uh, not lesser importance because it's, it's extremely important. But what happens with the sun, you know, the sun is, our pers is really our ego. And we must, we absolutely must um, work our sun or we're not happy. Uh, there, there, I mean, that's where we get our, our, our um, that's where we get our drive from the, uh, the sun. So that's, that's really important for us. But what's happening is the sun has to do the bidding of the soul. It works on behalf of the soul. So it ends up taking uh, kind of a, I don't know, second seat to the ascendant. That's the best way I can, I can describe that. And then we have the moon. In, and of course, we know the moon is about our emotions, our, how we feel about things. And that's always important. In esoteric astrology, it's also said that the moon is our biological karma because it's what we've inherited. It's what we've brought forth from prior lives and also what we've brought forth from our family, from our parents, from our grandparents. So what we are working to do, even in evolutionary astrology, is work through our emotional issues. I mean, that's how we're evolving our consciousness. In order for the moon to be of service to the soul, we must heal the lower level um, manifestations of the, of the moon so that we can actually operate, not, we can operate with the higher uh, level of the moon. So, in the moon, and the other thing is the rulerships, the planet association with the signs is different. The reason is, you know, each planet has an affinity with a sign, and we know this. So, Gemini, of course, its affinity is with Mercury because it's all about communication. At the same time, the, the, the planets have a soul affinity. So both are operating and they operate based on, and, and which one operates the best is going to be determined by um, our consciousness and how well uh, or how much we have evolved the lower level consciousness into the higher level consciousness. So that's an overview. I'm, I have, a slide giving the rulers or the sign and planet association for the soul, uh, soul centered astrology, which is esoteric astrology, and also for traditional so that you can, you can look at it. And of course, I'm saying traditional and traditional is encompassing evolutionary and all types of most of the other types of astrology, which, as I said, is important. One other thing before I get into this, our um, humanity is, of course, we are at a crossroads here. And uh, we're at a crossroads with our consciousness. And so we're at this gate where we're going through all these tests. And let me tell you, these tests are not easy that we're going through. Um, and the, it, we're, we're looking to leapfrog into, of course, the age of Aquarius on one level, but on the other level, we're looking to advance our consciousness. So I know things don't look that good right now for most of humanity, but please know that we are where we're supposed to be, and I do believe that we are going to take that leap into another level of consciousness. We just, there is no way for us not to. So that said, 
let's, what I'm going to do is um, I have slides and I'm going to go through each sign, giving you the meaning of the sign, the keynote, which there is a mantra, a soul mantra for each sign. And I'm also gonna give you the purpose of that sign. This, when you're looking at your chart, you can look at a sign from you know, your ascendant, your moon, or your, your, your sun sign, or anywhere else you'd like to, and you can apply this information to any part of your chart. My goal today is to apply this information to the ascendant, because as I said before, this is where the soul's intention for the incarnation is being birthed through. And how much of that intention is birthed is dependent on our level of consciousness, on each of us. Sometimes we can get, the soul can get through just a little bit, and sometimes it's a whole lot. The point is, it's okay. Wherever we are, it's okay. We deal with, we, we accept what is, and we just keep striving for what it is we want. So. I'm going to put my glasses on so that I can, I can um, uh, see. Yes. So let's go ahead and get started with this. All right. So we talked about esoteric astrology and what it is. And it's, it's giving a larger perspective of life, of humanity. And uh, that humanity is not just inhibiting or in, inhabiting a little planet on its own in the solar system, but participating as an energy sense, uh, center within a greater life. It's concerned with the spiritual evolution of a person or groups of person. Esoteric astrology focuses on the soul, one's higher purpose, development of the soul, Component in the human being is the main focus of esoteric astrology. So we talked about, um, yeah, we talked about the, how it works and the uh, rising. Okay. This is a list of the planetary rulers for esoteric and uh, exoteric astrology for the signs. And I'll, you know, as I go through the signs, I will also talk about uh, why the esoteric rulers are different than the exoteric rulers. And don't, you don't have to worry about writing this all down completely at this time because I will also bring this chart back at the end of this, uh, at the end of the presentation. Let's move into Aries. Woohoo! I love Aries. So Aries, the meaning of Aries is it's the will to initiate the archetypes of the divine on behalf of the betterment of humanity. And what that means is, you know, because Aries is the beginning. It's that spark. It is that uh, initiator. And it's always going to be the initiator. This is where the soul says, I have this new idea, and I want to have it manifested here on the earth plane, and it will come through Aries uh, when it wants to do that. So if you have Aries on the ascendant, you are here bringing through, of course, new paradigms from the divine. So I'll just want to read a little bit here to make sure that I get it all, I, I let you know. I give you more information. So when Aries is working from the soul-centered perspective, it is sensing new paradigms that are being born into humanity and works to initiate these paradigms in society. That. So the keynote or the mantra, and when I, I put keynote here, it's also a mantra. When Aries is working in the higher or highest level, is that it can work when it's working on behalf of the soul. This is what the soul says through Aries. I come forth and from the plane of mind, I rule. 
This goes to why Aries is ruled by Mercury and not Mars. Because it's a mental, this is a mental, um, you're getting these sparks from the divine mentally. They're not, and you're also manifesting here on earth using your mind. It's not about using brute force. That's not what you want to do uh, because the soul doesn't work that way. So Aries is a pioneer and it is to be the voice of the new. So there again, we have Mercury because it's the voice of the new. Therefore, its esoteric ruler is Mercury. So, and we said, the keynote is, I come forth and from the plane of mind, I rule. This phrase indicates the influence of Mercury and the plane of intuition in the life. So the person actually is, he's thinking before he acts. This is totally different <laughs> with, with Aries. Aries usually acts and then it thinks, uh-oh, what did I do? Was this right or, or not right? So we, of course, talked about the purpose and the purpose is to bring forth new ideas. So the mind, the power of thought must be used to do this effectively, not using brute force. Force. Now, Taurus. Love Taurus. So, of course, the traditional ruler of Taurus we have as Venus. And um, it is, we have another planet that is veiled, meaning it's not seen. And that planet is Vulcan. If you're familiar with Greek mythology, Vulcan is the blacksmith of the gods. So all the gods, all of them, take their tools, their weapons, their, their shields and masks and everything to Vulcan to say, hey, I need this to work better. I need this to be stronger or more powerful. What Vulcan does is melts down the old, um, uh, the old tool and reforges it in, and infusing it with more power, um, more drive, or, um, uh, and, and basically it, it just making it better. And then gives it back to the God so that the God can use it. So remember Taurus is an earth sign. So we're talking about manifesting here on earth. But Taurus, the meaning of Taurus really is the desire to reveal the light of divinity within. So it's revealing, remember the Taurus, the bull, it has that third eye, and that is the light. That is the light of our own consciousness. So here, I'm gonna read this. Um, okay, we've got that. Okay, in the ancient teachings, it's the sign, it is the bringer of, it is the light bringer. The light that is referred to here is, uh, is building form as a function of revelation. So we get the revelation, the light, the consciousness, and then we build the form. It's perfect, isn't it? The keynote or mantra if the soul is speaking through taurus is i see and when the eye is opened all is light so this is what happens when we actually see reality as it actually is what we see is light nothing but light so the so let's an example you're, you're, if you're working with Taurus on the higher level, the soul level, what we have is, say we have beauty. The beauty is already there, but what we, and what we want to reveal is the beauty, say of a piece of artwork. We want to uh, draw or paint. So the, the beauty is already there, but what we need to do is get the vision 
and get all the component pieces and put them together to have that beauty manifested or manifest here on in reality on the earth plane whether we're 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 building a business whether we're um you know creating a speech that we're giving whatever it is it already exists out in the universe and what we're doing is bringing all the component pieces together to manifest it here on the earth plane so this is taurus um, working on the esoteric level so everything created is form whether it is ideas or physical so this is why the mantra is um, i see and when the eye is opened all is light and the purpose of course is what we're doing with taurus is we're enhancing our senses and we're also releasing attachment um, and we have to release attachment so that we can see clearer so that we can bring through what it is we need to bring through in a clearer way that's why you know you've got taurus and scorpio opposite each other Ta scorpio is death and taurus is form so the intuition then becomes our guide gemini love gemini so with gemini um it is you know the tradition ruler in Gemini is Mercury. In esoteric astrology, it's Venus. And I'll tell you why. Because Venus is all about relationship. And, you know, we know this in regular traditional astrology, that Venus is about relationship. Oops, I've got a truck going by. I want to make sure that goes, I've got the window open. It's nice to have it open too, because of, um, you know, haven't been able to do that in a while. So Venus is concerned with the higher mind and the relating of the higher mind to the lower mind, meaning the soul and the personality. Gemini is concerned with duality. Typically with Gemini, you know, there's two. There's, I mean, you, and of course with Gemini, you never know which one you're going to get. But because Venus is also uh, related with relationship, she comes in and she is the ruler because we want the soul and the personality to have a relationship together. Gemini is the builder or the sign where the Antikorana is built. And the Antikorana is the bridge between the soul and the mind. And it's said in, in, in the teachings that the Antikorana is just a few inches above the seventh chakra. That Antikorana is the bridge that we have to actually build. It's not just there. It's not an automatic thing. So um, we're building it through Gemini and we are working to have this relationship with the soul and the personality and also remember with gemini there are two stars involved we have uh, i believe it's pollux and casper is it casper i am pronouncing that incorrectly one of those stars i believe it's casper is actually dimming in light and the uh and pollux is increasing in brightness and light so I'll explain why, I'll tell you why I'm saying that in a minute. I think I've just gotten a, ahead of myself. So the meaning of Gemini is the relating of the pairs of opposites and the building of the Antikorana. That is the meaning of Gemini on the esoteric level. The keynote, if we're looking at it from the point of view of the soul is, I recognize my other self and in the waning of that self, I grow and glow. So it's the personality recognizing itself, recognizing the soul. So the personality is doing a little bit of waning and in that self, the, in that self, the soul is growing and it is actually 
controlling the personality. I don't like the word control because that seems so, I don't know, doesn't work. But that's the best word I can come up with for the moment. If you can think of a better word for it, for it, let me know. So it's the relating of the pairs of opposites, of course. The Antikorana, we talked about that. And the purpose of Gemini on the Ascendant is to teach about right human relations. This is also Venus. So Gemini is, I mean, we're talking about right human relationships with, with yourself or ourselves, with humanity, with whatever it is we are doing. It's about right relationships. Now, cancer, yay! So the meaning of cancer here in for esoteric is the building, building the foundation of the life through the warmth of nurturing love. Now, doesn't that feel good to say that? So, or to hear that? Now, with cancer, we know cancer traditionally is ruled by the moon because it's the, it, you know, it's our emotional body, it's our home, it's the home that we live in. With esoteric astrology, cancer takes on a different meaning, uh, as I've said here. But what it's doing is the whole life of the individual becomes the home. Isn't that interesting? So uh, your relationship with, say, your work, your, uh, your lover, your family, your everything becomes the home on, you know, of cancer, which is quite fascinating here. So the highest level, it's, oh, it's also ruled by Neptune instead of the moon. This is why. So the highest level of Neptune manifests as the Christ-like compassion. So cancer, as we know, is all about compassion. On the highest level, it's Neptunian compassion, not lower level compassion. Remember, Neptune is the spiritual planet for us. So it's Neptunian compassion. So um, cancer at its highest level has redefined what home means. It's no longer the house that we live in. It is the entirety of the life that is the home. So the, with cancer, it is, the question for cancer is, how light are these rooms in the home? Because it's all about the light in the rooms. And we need to bring in as much light as we can. We can. So we have the keynote of uh, cancer is, I build a lighted house and therein dwell. So we're looking to have uh, the house that, you know, our home, all these different rooms, we're looking to have all these rooms as lit up as possible. Therefore, we can give Christ-like compassion to other people. When people come to us, they're drawn to us because we are that lighted home and we can help from, you know, help to nurture others because Cancerian on the Ascendant is about nurturing and it's nurturing others, but not nurturing others with a clinging uh, part. It's, it's Neptunian. Not not clinging moon type. It's uh, totally different than that. So, of course, the purpose is giving compassion to society. And that is cancer. Now, Leo. Love Leo. With Leo, the sun is the ruler of Leo on both the esoteric level and the exoteric level. Um, and basically it's the will to be the authentic self and the power to convey illumination. So on the, on the regular uh, exoteric level of Leo, 
Leo really is, it's the king, it's the king of the beast. But it's, and it also is looking for um, recognition. On the highest level, Leo is not looking for recognition at all. It has learned to be with a capital B, B E. It has learned to be. It needs no outside help or uh, it needs no outside um, recognition at all. It just is. And it rules from that perspective, from that point. So we have, um, yeah, the will to be authentic, the authentic self and the power to convey illumination. So the quest, there's a quest for Leo, is to know thyself. And as such, the sun for Leo is the center of the identity. However, on the personality level, it is the self as per the personality. But on the esoteric level, it's the self as soul. Big difference. So the higher level lion has to learn to be not needing validation from outside sources. The keynote here, if the soul is speaking through Leo, is I am that and that I am. There is no separation there. So the soul and the personality, I am that, the personality and the soul, and the soul am I the personality. Isn't that sweet? That's nice. So now Leo is, is, is prepared to rule as a conscious extension of divine will. To lead from the heart is the purpose of Leo. Now, Virgo, love Virgo. Mercury is the traditional ruler of Virgo here. Um, and Vulcan is actually the ruler in esoteric astrology. So Mercury, if, uh, Mercury, hello, Virgo, is the meaning is the gestation of the Christ principle within the womb of substance. So let's break this down so that uh, you know we can understand it. So, oh, I'm sorry, I said Vulcan. It's not Vulcan that is the ruler. It's the moon that is the ruler. But the moon veils Vulcan and okay a little bit too much information, sorry about that. So the reason the moon is the ruler on the esoteric level is due to the moon on its higher level or its highest level, uh, veiling Vulcan, the blacksmith of the gods. The veil in this instance means Vulcan is hidden and not accessible until the lower qualities of the moon have been transformed to the higher. Virgo is the sign of purification on the esoteric level. Therefore, you know, we get its meaning here. So it, it's in this, it is in Virgo that the three levels of the personality physical, mental, and emotional are purified so that the Christ principle, and the Christ principle is just the soul, that's what that means, can be birthed. As, and so a, a picture, I mean, most of you are aware of the picture of, of Mother Mary holding Jesus. Well, Mother Mary represents the moon. And Jesus represents the Christ. But we're talking about the moon and the Christ principle. So we have the moon giving birth to the Christ principle. That's actually the meaning of that, of that piece of artwork. But anyway, I digress. So then we've got um, 
uh, the personality can be seen as the womb or the gestation of the soul. And the level of personality purification affects how much the soul can be of, of service to humanity. The keynote, if the soul is speaking through Virgo, is I am the mother and the child. I, God, I matter am. And matter, we know, is form. So what we have is the three components of the personality are aspects of the soul form. Therefore, it's considered as matter. Virgo honors the sacredness of the duality of form, the personality form and the soul form. So of course the purpose is for, for Virgo is giving the love of the divine through your work. That's what Virgo is about. Now we have Libra and Libra, a oh, special sign, it's that halfway point um, in the Zodiac as, as we are aware. And of course the traditional ruler of Libra is Venus. Hold your hat, the esoteric ruler of Libra is Uranus. Why? Because Libra is concerned, Libra is, like I said, it's a halfway point and it's where we actually have what's called an energetic reversal of the wheel. So when we are, you know, when we're moving through the chart uh, of astro the, the wheel of astrology, I mean, we traditionally go in the, um, uh, uh, you know, we go in one direction and then with Libra, it reverses. So when we are incarnating, we're going one direction. And that is what we're doing with our uh, exoteric rulers of, you know, doing traditionally. We're involving into form. Libra is that point where we're working back towards the soul. We're working back towards enlightenment because enlightenment really is, number one, seeing reality as it really is. And it's the soul having control over the personality completely. The turning of that wheel, uh, you know, evolution, that's what evolution really is is going back, the personality going back to the soul and working with the soul. And that's why it's Uranus, because, you know, Uranus, lightning bolts, electricity, and um, uh, that's, that's why it's like that. So Libra, of course, is concerned with the relating, um, is concerned with the relating, and its meaning esoterically is the harmonization of relating through the establishment of right relationship. Uh, the principle of relationship, which is much vaster than interpersonal relationships, looks at what is the right relationship to everything everything that is encountered along, uh, along with the right relationship to self. So the keynote here is, I choose the way which leads between two great lines of force. With Libra, remember, with Libra, it sees both sides of an argument. It, it, it's a, you know, you've got uh, complete opposites and Libra can see both sides. The point with Libra is to choose the middle path. Libra is also the sign that represents Buddhism because Buddhism um, he chooses the middle way, the middle path, and that's what and that's what Libra does. It's the middle path. So, with Libra, um, the the keynote here is. I choose the way which leads between two great lines of force. And Libra is the sign that resolves 
duality by choosing the middle way. It is in Libra, of course, that I said, where the reversal of the astrological wheel occurs. For many lives, we're talking many, many, many lives, we are involving clockwise into form and to the material life. And as we begin to do the journey of the spiritual path, we actually are evolving back to the soul. So the sign representing uh, the reversal of the wheel is Libra. The purpose of Libra is to bring balance to society concerning the right way of relating to one another. That's a big purpose. Scorpio. A lot of friends who are Scorpio. Love Scorpio. So we have, of course, the traditional rulers of Scorpio is Mars and Pluto. We know this. The esoteric ruler, Mercury. Yep. Mercury. Can you believe that? Yes, Mercury. So Mercury, um, Scorpio is the sign of the test. And we all know, we know that Scorpio, there's a lot of testing in it going on with Scorpio. So it's the sign of the test and the sign of discipleship. And discipleship isn't about any type of external guru. It's about your internal guru, yourself, your soul. And that is the mean, that is the discipleship. You're bowing to the internal you, not to anybody external to you. And so uh, Scorpio is the place where the disciple has to prove his or her fitness to serve the life of the soul. It's a hell of a test. All of us are, are we're all in it right now, actually. And individually, we're in it especially if we're incarnated right now. So the soul wants to know, are we really, do we really want to do the work of the soul? Or do we want to do the work of the personality? And this is where we're tested to find out if that's what we really want to do. So Scorpio, of course, is the, is the place where the disciple has to prove itself. So the esoteric meaning is discipleship that is demonstrated through the transformation of the shadow. What a shadow. We have to transform our shadow. And we're doing this in, <laughs> I'd say, in a critical way when we are dealing with Scorpio. The keynote, if Scorpio is, if the soul is uh, working through the personality, the keynote is, warrior am I, and from the battle, I emerge triumphant. Your warrior is not with anybody outside of yourself. It's with the self. It's, it's you're a warrior, um, and you're, tr you're working to transform your personality and transform your shadow. That's what you're doing here. So the fact of aspiring to live at a higher level of consciousness causes the shadow self to rise into the conscious mind. The shadow cannot be transformed through force. Now we're coming to Mercury. It can only occur through the application of mind. This is why we had, this is how we work with this battle. So the battle is with the shadow self. The purpose of Scorpio, using your mental energy to transmute darkness to light. If you have Scorpio on the ascendant, this is really, really important to know. Of course, wherever Scorpio is, this is the purpose. So now Sagittarius. With Sagittarius, we it's the quest for meaning and the aspiration to strive for one's vision. So here we have the traditional ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter. Excuse me. The esoteric ruler is the Earth. Yes, the Earth is a ruler. Hello, we live on the Earth. It should be here somewhere. So the Earth, 
with Scorpio, um, I'm sorry, not Scorpio. I'm still on Scorpio. With Sagittarius, we have um, the reason it's the earth is because Sagittarius is the path. And the path is here on earth and we must walk that path. So this is why it's, it's the earth as the ruler. So it, then the path takes us to the mountain of initiation, which we go to in Capricorn. But the path, we have to walk the path to actually get to that mountain. So the arrows that Sagittarius shoots are the, um, that's your, your, your arrows of aspiration and a vision. So what is your vision? What is your aspiration? Those are the arrows that you're actually shooting in Sagittarius. And uh, so, so the Sagittarian on the path has to remain grounded and walk in a focused, authentic way. Therefore, Earth is the ruler. And we've got the esoteric meaning here. Uh, the beam of one pointed focused light is aimed and shot at the goal. It's not, because you know with Sagittarius, a lot of times there's a lot of different goals and Sagittarius doesn't reach any of them. But you've got to have one goal and one focus and you aim your arrow at that goal and you reach it. Therefore, the keynote, the mantra, if the soul is speaking is, I see the goal, I reach the goal, and then I see another. So it's okay to have another goal, just reach the first one. Reach the first one first, and then move on to another goal. So, um, yeah, so you, you uh, the goal, we've got that. So the purpose of Sagittarius is discovering truths that benefit humanity. Because remember, um, that's what Sagittarius is all about. It loves the quest. It loves to uh, discover truths. That's why it's in the ninth house. It's discovering truths that benefit humanity, not the self. Then we have Capricorn. And with Capricorn, uh, the traditional the traditional and the esoteric ruler is still Saturn, but it's Saturn is operating a little differently with esoterically, and I'll tell you what that's about here. So the meaning is spiritual initiation and the will to achieve on behalf of the soul's purpose. So it is uh, Capricorn is the light of initiation which is attained through climbing the mountain of consciousness. It's the mountain of consciousness that all of us are climbing in Capricorn. And it raises our consciousness, the consciousness of the person on the path to a higher level. The highest point on the mountain, the highest point of consciousness on the mountain is where the person can, it's, where the person can reach, they can reach a particular state of consciousness and hold it. It's not that you reach a state of consciousness and you can't hold it. That's not the highest point on the mountain of consciousness. The highest point is what can you reach in your conscious, I mean, with consciousness and hold. That's what that's about. And so um, that's the highest point of consciousness at the top of the mountain. So the we've got the esoteric meaning. Capricorn rules all initiations. So the keynote is lost am I in light supernal, yet on that light I turn my back. What does that mean? It means that Capricorn has climbed the mountain of consciousness. It's reached a certain level. It uh, is there. It's achieved say it's enlightenment for that level of consciousness. At the same time, Capricorn hears the, the call and the, the cries of the people who are also trying to climb that mountain. And what Capricorn does, 
because of the, you know, through the soul, when the soul is, is operating, it, it turns its back on where it is and it actually carries that information back down the mountain to help other people reach their goal. So it's not self-centered at all. So the, this is why we have the keynote. The call to service is so strong due to the cry of suffering humanity that the now enlightened person turns their back on the supernal state and returns to humanity with the light of love and wisdom. So Capricorn is considered the practical mystic. Don't you love that? It's the practical mystic because it's reaching for the stars while keeping its feet on the ground, performing practical service. So the purpose is manifesting what is sacred for the benefit of humanity through their work or your work. Sorry, I just want to sneeze, I, maybe because I have the window open. But um, so that's why I'm rubbing my nose because I don't want to actually sneeze on camera. Aquarius. Aquarius, uh, the traditional ruler is uh, Saturn, as we know and Uranus, the esoteric ruler is Jupiter. And it is, Aquarius is really about love and wisdom. And so uh, it is the light that shines on earth across the sea. And the meaning is the giver of life through, giver of life through a thorough recognition of the unity underlying diversity. So with Aquarius, it honors diversity, as we know. It also un underlines the unity, which has all of this diversity in it. So what, Aquarius is doing is it's, uh, it's bringing forth new paradigms um, to work with others, or he's help, he, Aquarius is helping others to bring forth new paradigms into humanity. And so to do that, you've got to have diversity. And, and that diversity is causing these new paradigms to come forth into humanity. And so there is the unity in having to bring forth these new paradigms um, into humanity. We have another sign that is doing this, but is doing this on their own, and that is Aries. Aries works alone, whereas Aquarius works with the group. So uh, the keynote here is water of life am I poured forth for thirsty men. So it is bringing forth um, these, all of these paradigms, working with other people, other groups to bring forth paradigms for paradigm shifts in consciousness. And it's pouring that water out to humanity. Therefore, the purpose is using one pointed focus of the mind through the heart to radiate love out to humanity. That's the purpose of Aquarius. Now for our last sign, it is Pisces. So the traditional ruler of Pisces, of course, is Jupiter, or Jupiter and Neptune, we know this. The esoteric ruler, Pluto. Isn't that interesting? And, uh, and we'll, you'll, I'll tell you why here in a, in a minute. So the meaning of Pisces is the power to save through the demonstration of sacrificial love. The, what, what Pisces does very well is it shows us our shadow so that we can work with it. So um, let me just read this because I want to make sure I get this right. Pisces is considered the light of the world in esoteric astrology. This is because the job of Pisces is to bring the shadow of humanity up from the subconscious into the light for purification. 
And what is going on right now? We're at the end of the Piscean age and the beginning of the uh, Aquarius age, Aquarian age. We really don't want to take our shadow into the Aquarian age, whether that age has begun or not. Pisces is doing its best to bring up the shadow of humanity so that we can see it and purify it. So the esoteric meaning then is the power to save through the demonstration of sacrificial love. And the keynote here is, I leave the father's house and turning back, I save. This is, the father in this instance is the will aspect of the soul. That's what the father means. It's the will aspect of the soul. And the soul also has a father and a mother aspect, as we know. So Pisces is really good with the mother aspect. And the mother aspect is loving intelligence, which of course we know Pisces is well versed in, but it's not so good with the father, the will. Um, and it's the father aspect that has to be cultivated with Pisces. So this aspect is focused, immovable will, which can set boundaries and has the ability to say no. Hello, Pisces, you gotta be able to say no. That is the father aspect. So from the core of the father, the Piscean can then apply the mother aspect. So you have to have boundaries. You have to be able to say no. You, um, you have to be able to have an immovable will. Once you have all of that, then, we can apply the mother aspect, which is loving intelligence, and go, go out into the world to serve without burning yourself out, which is what you do if you can't say no. So the purpose is illuminating the shadow of humanity for purification. This is the purpose of, uh, of Pisces. Now that we've gone through the 12 signs, I'm putting up the planetary rulers again so that you can see them and um, uh, note them. This is a fascinating uh, um, area of astrology, esoteric astrology, and I invite you to uh, do some reading on it or contact me if you have questions or there's plenty of us out here uh, Oops, I was going to do a sample, but we don't have time for that. Um, well, maybe I can do that just for a quick minute here. I put a chart up of uh, someone that I know, and I was looking at it esoterically, and this person is an activist. She has Aries on the Ascendant. She works alone. She actually has tried to work with groups, but it doesn't work for her. She's made lots of changes in the legislature in, uh, you know, where birds are concerned, where um, fireworks are concerned, but she's done it on her own. And she's, you know, she's bringing through these new sparks. Now she has Aries and, um, uh, you know, Aries here is ruled by Mercury esoterically. So she's working, of course, um, uh, it's very difficult for her to do this work. Uh, there's no doubt about it, but she's looking for balance and she's trying to walk the middle path uh, with that balance, but it's very difficult to do. So, and I've uh, put up some resources here. Of course, Alan Oaken is my mentor for esoteric astrology. I love Alan, Ruth Hadiken. Uh, Philip Lindsay, who I've not studied with, but love his writings. Michael Bartlett is wonderful. Uh, Gail Harrison. There's the Lucius Trust, which is where I got a lot of this information. And of course, there's me. So if you'd like a reading or uh, you know more information, go ahead and contact me. I am available. And that is the end of my presentation.
Fantastic. Thank you very much, Marie. That was incredible. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to catching you next time. And thank you from all of us. Oh, you are welcome. Bye-bye.